Lesson 27, Switch Statements. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new console project and add a new file named main.cpp to it, as we did in Lesson 1. Switch statements allow us to write branches for integer type variables. To illustrate, consider this function f, which prints the value that is passed into the argument. The statement switch takes a variable and switches the execution to the case statements with the same value. The break statement is used to break out of the switch statement, so if we pass 0 and 1 into the function, it prints the values 0 and 1 respectively. We could easily write this code with an if statement instead, like this. The previous switch statement only handles argument values of 0 and 1, however we will often want to have an alternative branch that is executed when any value that is not handled by the case statements is passed in. To handle this, we use the default keyword inside the switch statement, like this. Now when we pass in the value like 45, the default branch is executed. The default keyword is comparable to the else branch of an if statement, and we can write a comparable if statement like this. So how do if and switch statements compare? Generally, a switch statement is more restrictive, but executes faster, so a switch statement should be used whenever it can be. Switch statements can only be used to check whether a value is equal to an integral constant, so we can't use a switch statement to replace the statements if x equals y, or if x equals 3.4, or if x is greater than 0. Switch statements are ideal for working with enumerations. Here we define an enumeration of type day and define two values Monday and Saturday. This function takes an argument to the type day and prints out whether it is a weekday or a weekend. In the main function, we call the function f with the arguments Monday and Saturday. Switch statements are versatile though, and we can stack several control paths into one easily. In this example, we add the remaining days of the week to our enumeration. In the switch statement, we put all the weekdays in one control path, and Saturday and Sunday in the other. In the main function, we call f with each day of the week and verify the expected result. In this next example, we define an enumeration of shapes. In the print type function, we use the switch to print the type. Notice that I have added parentheses to delimit the cases. This is generally considered good practice. Also, I have added a default path for the switch statement even though all the defined values are covered. Generally, a default path is a good idea since additional values are almost always possible. In the main function, we call the print type function with each of the shapes and the number 34 which has been converted to a shape. With a conversion like this, we can get unexpected input. This is the reason for the default path. Finally, we make a slight alteration to the last program. Recall that a square is also a rectangle. Here we remove the break statement from the square case and insert the rectangle case. Now when we call the function with the square as an argument, the function prints square and then rectangle. This sort of trick sometimes comes in handy. This concludes the lesson.